Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, here on Dork Tales. Uh, I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly, and tonight uh, we are talking about... Oh, green screen's out. But this is Lost Mine of Fandelver, the first half of... You can't see it. It's magically... It's it's invisible. Um, we're talking about Lost Mine of Fandelver here on a special How to Run episode uh, of uh, Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, if you have watched our first episode of our how-tos. We did go through chapters one and two. Now we're going to go through chapters uh, three and four, and we're also going to touch a little bit on one and two just to give you kind of an overview. So if you want to know how to run this module, uh, watch this video. It will have spoilers for the first half of the book, though. So if you're trying to go into this with fresh virgin eyes, uh, beware. Uh, you're going to get spoiled. We like to spoil you because we love you. Uh, besides that, uh, like I said before, hi, I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly. You see him as my pronouns. And uh, folks, let's go around and introduce everybody. Uh, you might notice that we have uh, just Caitlin's image there. Uh, Caitlin and uh, other Chris, not the one beneath me, uh, have both caught norovirus. So this was a perfect time for us to do this while they are uh, going on uh, an unfortunate impromptu weight loss challenge. Um, <laughs> So I hope you're I hope you're feeling better, guys. Um, and uh, good job keeping the baby out of this. Um, all right, so let us uh, pass it around, starting with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. Um, I use she/her pronouns, and normally I'm playing Lady Alessandra, uh, our Ismar Paladin. I am recovered from COVID, which is great because last week I was sick too. Um, and yeah. No, all in all, I'm doing better, which is great. But the fun part is that my new phone case arrived over the like last week, which made me very happy while I was sick because it's sparkly and holographic and great. And I just had a bunch of craft supplies arrive today. So like for an upcoming campaign. All right. Uh, we're going to toss the ball past Caitlin and drop it on Amy. Yeah, I'm 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 not good at those sorts of things, so that that would definitely just bean me in the side of the head. Uh hi, I'm <laughs> Amy. Pronouns are she heard they them. I usually play lyric, the tiefling, bard, but tonight I'm just me. Well, you're still level I'm five. Tired. Yeah, I I'm not sure what the level is in though. Peasant? Linguist. I feel Mischief like it's a higher level because I have a degree in that. Hmm. What level is what level do you get a degree at? At least level ten. I guess at three. Yeah, maybe. Because that's when you get your subclass. Oh hey, thanks for all the subs, Arve Arvetus. Oh my goodness. Holy crap, that's a lot of subs. Hello. Wow. You are Thank you're you. a that's sandwich incredible. artist with that many subs. <laughs> <laughs> that I took it the I took it the kind the, 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 the PG way, not yeah. the other way. I just saw Dirty <laughs> Mike funny. XL as one of the people getting a sub. Uh, shout out I to just saw, Dirty I just Mike saw, XXL. I just saw Roast Beef Sandwich <laughs> getting the <a> sub. <laughs> Dirty Sorry. Mike XXL. <laughs> what? What? So, the sandwich artist. I'm sorry. This is the funniest thing I've ever fucking heard. All right, well, I was going to edit that out, but I'm going to leave it in now because you're having a conniption fit. Uh, speaking of which, Krista, you're up. Hi, guys. I'm Krista. I use she, they, her, them pronouns. I normally play Camilla Alazarin, the damp here fighter. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I also had food poisoning last week, and we're all sick, uh, but I'm doing better. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> It wasn't from a Subway sandwich this time. I did get severe, the worst food poisoning in my life twice from Subway. Uh, so I don't eat at Subway anymore. <laughs> Subway, eat flesh. Um, all right. I think that might be the problem. Uh, and last but not least, yo, Chris, what up? <laughs> I'm a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, I'm actually thinking about like my, my Subway sandwich order. Uh, it is the meatball sub, obviously, mm -hmm. with um, the white cheddar, spinach, and then hot sauce. Um, it's only good eating in the shop. Eating it anywhere else is a mistake because then you have cold meatball goo. Um, yeah. So not great. Uh, hi, I'm Chris. I usually play Sindri the way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk. Uh, I use he or they pronouns. Sindri uses he, him pronouns. Uh, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm sorry that we are missing Caitlin because they got the fucking plague. 
well, seriously, who has been like, this has been a really rough month. I literally got uh, food poisoning and COVID within 24 hours of each other last week. Um, then Christine got COVID and Robin got COVID and nobody else got COVID. It was just the three of us, thankfully. Um, and then Amy, I think you're the only one that didn't get sick, but you've been having like migraines. We're all broken. We're all, guys, don't turn 30. Can, can we put the gang gets COVID on in post? Like, uh, da, it's always sunny style. Da, da, yeah. <laughs> Comma, uh, in small brackets again. You know that we actually had a show called It's Always Magical in Pandelia, right? That did that at the beginning of every episode. I was a I half orc monk magical girl. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. No, Robin, you're spiritually I had a little... 30, though. I had a little rat familiar that also got a magical girl outfit every time I critted with that axe. It's true. Squeak. All right. So, hey, folks, uh, today we are going to be talking about this invisible copy of Lost Mine of Fandelver. Um, here, there we go. Now it's in a book. There we go. And the shattered. Oh, it's still green screens. It. All right. Whatever. Uh, hey, we're going to be talking about how to run this. So uh, if this is your first time tuning in, be sure to give us a sub. Give us a. a God damn it. I can't say sub now. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, give us give us a like. Uh, so um, basically, this book is, is segmented into two different parts. Lost Mine of Fandelver. And then the other part, the shattered obelisk part. Uh, we're about to be jumping into that next week, and it is a whole damn different module. It's it's the brand new part. But Lost Mine of Fandelver is a classic. It came with the old 5e starter set, and uh, everybody's played it. The Adventure Zone started with it and then spun that out. And there is a bunch of stuff in it that you can really have a lot of fun with. But today we're going to talk about what uh, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, what we would suggest to you, and what we wish we would have done differently. Uh, so uh, let's let's jump in. What did you hate about the module? Let's, let's start with bad stuff. Besides like there being a million and one quests. Sindri, well, Chris. Well, um... That was it. That's why my hand went down right away. Um, it's the, the timing's awkward. Uh, the story's fine. The timing's awkward. Like you, it's a hurry up and wait situation. Um, mm. I like I like how much uh, like versatility there is in it, but also like, why would you do anything but go rescue your friend? Yeah, yeah, and especially because like it's there are quite a few ways to find where Kragma Castle is. So, I mean, it, they, they do try to slow you down by obscuring where it is, and then you have to go through these quests to find it. But that also just seems, it seems kind of pointless, because I think that particularly, particularly um, clever players can find their way around that pretty quick. Um, I feel like they could have, like, done something a bit more clear with, like, having everything go that way. Being like, oh, well... I don't know, but I think this person would know mm -hmm. type thing. And can you do this on your way? Because that would Fair. still give you a reason to like level. And then if you like, the person could be like an old Camarajan type and you have to do something to get it from them. Yeah. But even then, the why would you just not tell the somebody where something was? Like, why would it matter? <laughs> yeah. And it, it feels like giving all of these options to find a way if it's like okay do you want to go talk to the cleric of luck do you want to talk to the old adventurer drow do you want to talk and then like but wherever you go you get the information you need and you can go from there mm -hmm. i feel like mm -hmm. would have been a better option instead of like having to do all of these millions things it's true and some of them are really disconnected like going out yeah. to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, as far as I can tell right now, because um, I'm still reading the back half of the module, um, going to the ruins of Thunder Tree is really interesting. You fight a dragon, you get the map from the druid there, uh, and so on. But going to, like, um, going to the, what is it, Old Owl Well, to meet that necromancer, that, that feels really disconnected. Like, cool, there's a necromancer. And, Fun episode. Uh, it's a fun episode, yeah. It's 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 a fun little world building thing, which sometimes in D and D that's all you want. They're trying to disguise that it's railroady, <laughs> because Was you that... have to go there and then you have to go here, type thing, right? Like obviously you're going to go do that, and that's the sole reason for being there. So they like... kind of have to give you a bunch of stuff to do, but they also wanted you to be leveled. 
so that you could do more interesting stuff once you got there. But why mm. wouldn't you just start at a higher level? Mm. Goblins, because they want the goblins to be a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Just like those goblins, then. Those goblins fucked us up. <laughs> <laughs> but that had nothing to do with the module. That is true. Yeah. Like, we would have been like, fucking fine if it was just the module. <laughs> you know what it had to do They had it. more in between that and getting to Fandolin? Yeah. Or Fandelver? Yeah, yeah. Like, between Gundren being taken and us getting to this town... We could have had some more stuff like travel to there in order to level and then travel from there to Kragma to level. Mm -hmm. Or even if there was some ambiguity of like, was he kidnapped or is he just like, did he meet up with his brothers and like mm -hmm. end up somewhere else? And someone would be like, oh, yeah, no, I think I saw him on the road. And that person's wrong. And they saw his brothers somewhere else with, you know, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw him with a with a drow. But really, it was mm -hmm. like him being Mm. Like there, there could have been something that made it so it wasn't like Gundren's been kidnapped. <laughs> now do all this stuff. Yeah. Do all this stuff. Well, I think, and it's in terms of um, you guys getting mulched by goblins. I think that had less to do with it being a module and more to do with you thought I'd forgot, but our sponsor, Bookworm Games, <laughs> uh, which provided the dice I used to mulch you guys, thanks to Bookworm Games, uh, where you can go and save fifteen percent with code Dorktales. Ha ha! I snuck it in in the middle of this. Ha ha! You can't skip it. Um, go to Bookworm Games right now. Check out their Fungal Familiars Kickstarter. Uh, get get all these cool dice and use them to destroy your players, make them cry, and. Uh, as the goblins say, Briark. Uh, back to you, Skip. <laughs> and honestly, those same dice roll. I have a couple sets of, of bookworm dice, and they roll great when I'm a DM, and they do not like me as Carmilla. <laughs> That's just... like Carmilla is meant to be a disaster. She's a bisexual disaster in the truest sense, and they know. The dice know. <laughs> It's true. How else? How else? Um, so uh, let's let's talk about what worked about the first part of the module. Like we're talking about chapters one and two. Let's just give a quick summary. So like what I liked about it, I like the opening adventure. I like the hook. I don't like the execution. Like if you broke it down into three acts for the first part, uh, basically going from when you start the game to when you find out where Kragmaw Castle is. Hell, that's not even chapter two. That's chapter three. Uh, until you fight the Red Brands, basically, is the end of chapter two. Um, they, it's fun, but it feels, like like you said before, it feels really railroady. It feels really, like, puffed. But I do like these events independently. And I do like the town. It feels quintessential standard D&D, &D, which is not a bad thing. It feels like... The, oh, this, if there's a reason that they run this adventure all the time. There's a reason that like everyone's like most people have played it. Like it's a very good D and D E. Like it's not doing like Strixhaven-y things. It's not doing Dragonlancey things. It's like this. I'm doing. You're doing D and D today. There's goblins, and you're gonna go meet bandits, and you're gonna go and like hell yeah, sure. Like I'm I'm down for that. I love me some classic feeling D and D. Here there be goblins. So, yeah, exactly. Like. I, yeah. It feels like I'm around the table, like having a beer and, and chips. There's a, there's a, I feel like there's a bell curve of how you like your D and D. And at first, when you're brand new, you want it to be dungeons and motherfucking dragons, and you want it to be goblins and bandits and and really basic like fetch quest things. And then you play a little bit, and you go, okay, I'm bored of that now. I want to do like D and D in space or at a university, or you know, I, I need it to be weird. And then you kind of come down the other side, and you're like, no, I want to see how I can turn the the classic on its head. Um, and and uh, like you said, Kelly, I think all of the individual parts of this have been pretty good, but I think that's just a struggle with the modules in general is like, and it's something we always complain about in modules. It's like, yeah. well, there wasn't really any connective tissue or like, it feels like there's a lot missing here. Mm. And, you know, that's obviously left as room for you to fill, but it often feels like the things that should have been left open are filled. And then the things that are like, are that actually are left open is or the things that are very clearly defined and you have to follow is stuff that's like well, maybe you could have just left that open for me to decide <laughs> kind of right and i so so if i had some advice to give you if you're running this module 
I want you to do three things. One, really lean on the players to connect the tissue here. Build relationships with Gundren. Make them actually kind of like him. Okay? You have very few pre-scenes to do it. Do a back, do a flashback scene like I did. I thought that worked pretty well. Give him some personality. Make him Southern. That always helps. Who doesn't want to help a cowboy, right? Um, but uh, make some connective tissue. As Krista was saying, this this module does lack a lot of things that will take you from one place to the other. Uh, really lean on the NPCs in this town, but make a spreadsheet of them. My God, there are a lot of NPCs here, and some of them are not even in the first chapters. You have to turn to the later half of the book to get them, like who, um, like Tobin's kids, like what their names are, and his wife's name is not even in the first part of the book, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you have to go later on, or uh, the blacksmith. The, the blacksmiths in town, I had to find them on the Fandelver wiki. Uh, so, like, you know your players are going to be like, I want a sword. Of course there's a blacksmith. Someone has to have horses here. You know, like, they're at, somebody needs nails. They don't just import all their nails from Neverwinter. That would be idiotic. Also, the markup would be insane. You know? Um, so, like, you have to think about this from, from that type of mindset. So make a spreadsheet stay on top of everybody also keep if you do accents or any character work it, you can make little columns for that um use a google sheet use a excel sheet whatever whatever works for you use a notebook if you have to but keep track of every npc uh also things that i would really strongly recommend is um let your players be human in this first part um I think that there are a lot of people, and I noticed there were a couple of YouTube comments about this, about how they disagreed with player actions because the player actions did not match stock D&D tropes. Like uh, Christine, for example, uh, that so someone was upset that you didn't kill the necromancer on site. Yeah, well, I'm an Oath of the Watcher. That doesn't mean I hate every potentially evil or evil-esque or stereotypically evil thing i'm yeah. an oath against extra planar things which is why i played it up when we like had to mm. leave, leave like the nothic alone exactly because we didn't want to yeah. get in the fight <clears throat> krista and i while i don't agree with people telling us how we should play characters i think that's backseat gaming but i i i did agree with that a little bit from my point of view i felt as a character that krista came out and was like oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck i wasn't supposed to attack this guy oh shit oh shit oh shit um and i had to kind of backtrack and then try to retcon why my character wouldn't kill them um and and so but but i think i think it it ended up working in the character of like oh yeah these we don't just murder and slaughter people and mm -hmm. she she attacked under the same guy like thinking the same thing that krista thought which is like this is guy's clearly evil he's a fucking necromancer and this is classic D D. so of course mm. the necromancer is evil and then he wasn't <laughs> <laughs> and... i love i love that twist because like what's the okay uh, people always say necromancy is evil but it's a main option in the core book i'm sorry if anybody can go to school for it that's like saying all yeah. business majors are evil <laughs> most but not well... all <laughs> I Wither, said Wither Bloom in Strixhaven is druids and necromancer. It's ne necromancy. It's life it's and goth death. Kids. Half, well, maybe a third, like a third of the kids in in Wither Bloom are goth. necromancers of some kind. Okay. Yeah, they're all goth. <laughs> like necromancy and demons. Like they're. <laughs> that's just contract yeah, demons law. and devils exactly. Oh, that's devils. Yeah, demons is chaos. Yeah, <laughs> chaos that's is just thing too. Chaos. Yeah, but well, yeah, because like also yeah. like from my point of view is like I wasn't I didn't want to play a paladin to solely be a goody two shoes, like because that's an irritating character to play. It's an irritating character to play with too. That is absolutely true. What are what were you saying, Chris? Oh, I was just gonna say uh, our par that's not who our party have proven to be. Like they're they're violent, totally. but they're not murderous. They're at like they will generally mostly give people a second chance. Like right, and I love and that try and get money out of them occasionally <laughs> <laughs> but if like, they yeah if they can like let let your players be human or whatever race they are yeah. uh, let them be people um and and let your npcs be people too let, like I, I honestly think that most of the npcs will try to plea bargain rather than fight to the death a lot of the time um 
one thing that I was trying to think of a way to do this because um, I always worry that some of my combats get a little rote uh, or that like my tactics are, are awful. Um, and I do, it's because I do my, a lot of my bad tacticing deliver, deliberately. Like I go, ah, I don't know what this party's made of. I don't know that you're a cleric. I don't know you're a monk. Why wouldn't I try to use something that affects your wisdom? You know, mm -hmm. I'm just a goblin with a bow. Like, I'm going to shoot the big guy because he's big, right? Well, you know, that's what pisses me off sometimes in Baldur's Gate 3. Is I notice the goblins always hex the right stat. And I'm like, yeah. fuck you, you don't know I use wisdom. Get bent. Try yeah, hexing so, my strength. I was hitting you with a sword. <laughs> so, like, definitely, like, I like to try to play into that. Um, if you want to give your players more of a challenge, there are a couple of options I could give give you if you are a more mechanically minded DM. I was thinking about this, uh, and I would say for every for every stat bonus that they have, uh, for every ability score bonus that they have to their intelligence, let them assume one thing about the player characters. Like, there is a cleric among them. They are... Um, or maybe give them a battle tactic or something like that because they did their research, right? But if, they, if they're, if they like, an intelligence 10 or below, they're going to make dumb mistakes unless they're kobolds because you can't defeat kobolds. They're too smart. They're too, they're too crafty. I'm terrified of us encountering kobolds. Kobolds uh, just wreck you. I know, like, between our, like, our stealth checks and traps in general, like, we're all absolutely hosed. Well, because don't they have pack, ta pack tactics inbuilt? So they yep. have a battle tactic inbuilt to them racially. Like, doesn't matter how smart or not they are. That is, like, an instinctual tactic that yep. they do. And you know that as soon as you get there, Anthea is going to pull off her face and reveal that she's a lizard person the whole time. Mm -hmm. And she's been a kobold. <laughs> That's when they, or Anthea just captures us in the AoE of the fireball. That's basically what happens. So uh, the Red Brand hideout uh, is pretty grotesque. Uh, don't get lodged in it. Uh, other things, I would strongly suggest you give the players options to have more of the story come out. Like, for example, a reminder that the invisible closet does not mean inaudible. So if he walks, they can probably hear him. Because clo if you ever listen to a dog walking on linoleum, that's what a, a closet sounds like on stone floor like tick, 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 tick. you're gonna hear that. i can hear my dog from a floor away at night going to go investigate and i'm like and what are you doing in the cupboard yeah sniff sniff i slurp, can hear slurp. you i mean um, hell we could hear my hamster when it got out of its cage that was just its claws on the floor <laughs> exactly so you're gonna hear a closet a closet is twice as heavy as a hamster at least um so, uh, the one thing that I would say is that when you encounter Yarno, uh, Yarno Glassstaff, um, he will try to run if your players trigger an alarm. And if your players are anything like mine, their stealth checks are going to suck and they're going to pick a fight. I generally run a one room buffer rule in terms of, of noise. So if you make noise and it's not terribly bad or longer than about two rounds of combat, he, like in room A room c might not hear it okay but room b will if it's right across the hall they'll probably hear it um they they messed up big time and he heard and ran away however he's on the run i had him come back and uh use him to beef up the fight in cragmaw castle i encourage this because that fight kind of sucks um we'll get to that in just a second uh is there anything else about the beginning chapters you want to talk about or should we just jump right in to the side chapters the spider's web i mean i'm happy to once again point out that maybe the distribution of information could be a little more staggered and not here's your your laundry list your checklist grocery list of things that you need to go do but also Those here's are. a whole bunch of lore and information that you need to now know and not giving up in any sort of bite-sized chunk in a way that will make it easy to remember fair so maybe maybe break that apart and have things come to light or yeah fair um so when you are going on these multiple quests uh we are in chapter three the spider's web so uh chapter three covers the banshee meeting the old owl well which is where the uh the necromancer is thunder tree which is the the village of the damned uh wyvern tor which you guys didn't go to and cragmaw castle at the very end. So that's its own little section. So basically, they want you to do all of these things so that you can level up. There are a bunch of wilderness encounters that you can encounter. 
I like some of them quite a lot. Uh, the ones that, so they've got the standard, you're attacked by Sturges. I hate Sturges. They're giant mosquitoes. They're, uh, if you ever played Curse of Strahd, they're everywhere. Um, there's a ghoul fight, which I had prepped in case you guys did it. There's an ogre that you can come across. Um, there is a Kregma goblin band that, uh, you can fight a hobgoblin squad, uh, as well as some wolves and a bug, or probably an owlbear. Um, I decided to have the wolves be a bit of a side, like social encounter more than a combat encounter because, Wolves generally don't just attack people in real life unless they're starving. Um, it's much more likely that you would come across some type of kill and interrupt their feeding and they'd get territorial. Um, that seemed more more honest to me. And then that gave... Uh, I looked for ways to basically have the players have a role-playing opportunity. Like Carmilla being a child of the night. You know, having, having her be able to relate to wolves, pretty cool. Having everybody meet a bunch of owlbears... Super cool, because who doesn't love Albert Cub? Right? Albert Cub is my favorite. Albert Cub is pretty great. Hungry. Is life. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've really been enjoying the... Uh, I think it's very interesting, and you've done this very well, Kelly, of Thank like um, linking Carmilla's animalistic side to the naturalness of it and being like this doesn't make you a monster like a, you wouldn't call a wolf a monster for acting in its nature and you wouldn't call bats monsters for acting in their nature sure they're spooky or scary to some people but it doesn't make them evil and i think that like it's been it's been great because there's been a lot of opportunities for that in this module on top of i know you've thrown a couple of things in as well mm. just out of out of that but um like that's uh, if if you are a new DM and you are looking for things like that and you're looking for ways to individualize an adventure for your characters, it's exactly that. It's it's giving those opportunities, and I think we've all had those opportunities that, um, like in the in the in the town, everyone mm -hmm. kind of had they could really connect with. Um, once we were out of it, everyone has had an opportunity to really thrive in a specific situation um, and has found those role play moments. Um, some of us have found those in like Kelly has given us space to find those moments between each other as well, as well as encourage them. Um, mm -hmm. I know I have like off camera been like, there's a scene I really want to run with Lyric and I really want to have this. Is that okay? And I like talk to Amy about it, like, hey, this is kind of what I'm going to be doing just to give you a heads up because I'm going to ask you some really deep questions about Lyric's personality. So I want to like let you know this is going to happen. <laughs> and and the cool. fact that and yeah, I think it turned out amazing, and I loved that. And and I and the fact that Kelly like gave us that space to do that um, is just proof that even in a module that feels like it should be clunk 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 clunk, there is always room to give your players that time to be their characters. Well, and that is something. The more modules I run live, right? Because li live running is completely different than table running, folks. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, it is a different game because you have to worry about performance and you have to worry about cutting, like trimming some of the fat off of the module to, to and, and keeping a good pace up. Um, but this is the module. The more, more I run, the more I go, you know what? Screw it. Um, and you can definitely see that if you go back and watch Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, or even before that you watch Curse of Strahd, you can see how I had shackles on me the whole, the whole game and how I felt really constrained. And I had really a lot of tunnel vision on trying to get the module, especially Curse of Strahd. Cause that, is a really good module that is also a mess. Like, it's just, there's so many potential things happening in that one. But um, with every module, I'm getting more like, yeah, we're going to do whatever we want. Screw this. Uh, as we will will encounter when I just decided to have Visit Iowa show up. But I think that's what people... It's so good. It's so good. I th But I think that's what people want, right? Like, people want to see... They don't as much as they want to see like the vanilla game and we're trying to help you guys see what it's like to run this game. Do you want to see what we're doing with it too? And you want that, that home home game flavor, which is honestly why we play because we want to play with our friends. Um, so yeah, we get experimental, be weird with it. Just be consistent. Um, is if you change something, just make a note of it. So you don't forget later. Uh, so dealing with the Banshee, was that was one of the first things you go to the banshee and if you're respectful and polite you basically just like give her the ring and bargain with her um that got pretty 
heated between her and Anthea pretty quick. That wasn't that wasn't planned. That just was natural. Chat, she's a she's just a she's a banshee that prefers the she. Um, uh, so that was pretty basic. Just have fun with that. It's it's a fun one. Um, Old Owl Well is where you go and there's like a dozen zombies, 12 zombies lurk inside a crumbled shell of an old watchtower and then there's a tent with a dude who is just like, he's a necromancer doing research. Uh, you fight him or you kill him or you make a make a, an agreement with him because he just wants to do research. Uh, and he wants the marauders at Wyvern Tor to leave. Um, uh, he did not ask uh so he shares one or both of the requests um so that was one of the options he also wanted agatha the banshee um wanted to ask the banshee the name of the wizard that built the tower uh but also i was like he's a necromancer and how often do you get to meet a vampire or a vampire spawn or a vampire cousin or a dampier or whatever right so like that was a great way to just be like hey uh, can I have uh, some blood? I won't use it against you later, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Never, of course not. Ugh. As as jaded as Carmilla is, she's very naive. <laughs> um, so I mean, I don't think there's much that can be said about that. Just make him a human. Uh, we'll make him make him a person when you run it. Uh, because I do think that like a uh, couple like those couple of YouTube comments is like, well, why didn't you just kill him? So well. Why, why would you, I don't like to go into D and D with the mindset of like, we're going to kill everything. Like we're going to, we're going to experience the world. And if it tries to kill us, oh yeah, we're going to wreck it. But if it doesn't like, I don't want to kill something just because it looks funny. I want to have a funny looking friend, maybe. Um, so ruins of thunder tree, uh, is where you go to thunder tree and you find a bunch of ash zombies um krista you could make it to a couple of games because i think you caught like a plague or something um probably or so, you you caught some like because every like god january had the worst cold in the world going around it and i and like just there was a bunch of sickness so um i wrote you out using that um that undead allergen yeah it's great it's a great spin it was, you know, it was good. So feel free to in incorporate things like that. Add to the world. Screw it. If it's not in the core, it is in now. Um, but it seemed like something that Rayloth, the druid, would actually have started planting to try to, like, cage these guys in using naturopathy. So besides that, you can go around and uh, you can investigate. There are uh, draconic uh, cultists there who were worshipping Venom Fang. Um... You guys killed Venom Fang before they could they could interfere, and they're just like, "Oh, well, you killed our god, man." Bummer. Um. So then, um, fighting fighting Venom Fang is the best part of Thunder Tree. That's why I wanted you guys to go there. I'm not gonna lie, I wanted you to fight a dragon because who doesn't like fighting a dragon? Uh, Venom Fang is this little crappy young dragon, but he almost nuked you guys, especially because you were a player down that episode. so hard. I tried so hard to talk our way out of it. You were so close. You were so close. Um, and this is the thing. Dragons can be reasoned with. It was that you, you said one thing said, wrong. Yeah, it was, I said I didn't have anything else to tell them because I figured if I said I had held information back that that would be like well you're useless anyway yeah so there's no was, there no win there it was basically that like green dragons are jerks and they're always looking for ways to screw people over and lyric just said a couple of things wrong right at the end where he was like oh i guess i don't need you anymore <laughs> and then fair, she didn't actually tell him everything she just said that she yeah, had but he's like he's only a couple hundred years old man he doesn't know any better if that. Uh, Wyvern Tor, you guys didn't do. Um, does anybody have anything they want to say about um, about either the Banshee, the Necromancer, or about Thunder Tree? I have never fought a dragon before as a DD what? character. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of uh, DMs like don't want to like run dragons or like people like the campaign only lasts a couple episodes, uh, like things. I've very rarely been a PC in like a long running DD game, like forever DM life. But also like mood. Um, yeah, it's the first time I got to fight one. And it was like, oh, this is fucking tough. Like we've had some 
some tough fights before, but like raid, this raid boss style fight is like pretty fun. It is pretty fun, right? Uh, in Dreams of Arcos the other day, they they fought on uh, I guess yesterday they fought a Jabberwock, and that fight was Ooh. brutal. I was downed like at least three times. Yeah, it's a CR thirteen, and they were all level level seven. And they they won by the skin of their teeth. It I'm glad it ended up being I hard. Think. Oh yeah, well the first it came out of nowhere and used its. I I also got initiative, which is so so important when you are playing a dragon. Because you just you show up and you're, you you use your breath weapon or your eye lasers, and it's just that it's it's tenderizing. It's great. Um, anybody have any thing they want to say about Thunder Tree? Uh, Our favorite. Music I was going to say basically this whole part again just added into the like why are we doing this um mm. it all felt very pointless and like i was i was an i haven't i was invested in the first couple sessions till we hit the town then i was checked out aside from the like interpersonal stuff and then when we got to Wave Echo Cave, I was like, okay, I'm invested again. We're back on track. But the all of those episodes in between, I've just been like, okay, we're doing this, I guess. And it all just felt very pointless. Like, yeah. I enjoyed... Fun stuff. Yeah. The, the, wow. Like, as, as a standalones, I enjoyed them. But yeah, they didn't make much sense for the point of going and getting Gundren. So this person we know is kidnapped by people who are doing awful things and who could be being killed anytime and we're wasting time debating with a green dragon and stuff like that. Well, um, so like, I think it could have been structured better inherently in the module to make it more a clear path because in the long run, they don't need to dress it up and say, oh, well, you could go here. You could go here. You could do this. It's like, you're going there. <laughs> that's the whole point. If you don't go there, the rest of the story doesn't happen. Like, that's what a module is. But you're not high enough level. Like, I think like there's a real push like, against, like, railroading. I love that every time I pick my hands up into frame, I'm holding something different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, don't worry about that. Um but every uh like a lot of the, like the feedback is just like oh well this module is railroading or dms are railroading it's like and d like a lot of like dms and writers are afraid of being like oh we need to like actually uh be really careful with uh what we're uh, how we're presenting this like, but, like if you don't want a railroad don't run a module exactly and that's real like actually like running a really intense like scene for players is actually really fun um uh, and like running like a really intense like set of modules so like if you we, we ran like from goblin raid to caves to fandelver right into wave echo cave and we like had all these things we needed to do i'd actually have been fine with that mm -hmm. um and, and like because it would have kept that set of, set of urgency but um we've talked about this a, a lot but i do really feel like uh like do you, like i'm like mm, i'm okay with the dungeon crawl i'm okay with like give like give me shit that i need to do in a hurry mm -hmm. um yeah. But like that said, like I love most of how stuff turned out in those um, sessions, mainly because I think like in a lot of cases, a lot of people would have run it as just it's a combat fight. But Kelly has mm -hmm. given like a lot of work to accept and roll with the weird ass reactions his players come up with. So like walking up to a banshee and knocking, going, hello, anybody home? <laughs> Works. <laughs> well, the banshee wasn't expecting it and neither was I. So, you know. Yeah, element of surprise right there. But I'm it means thinking... that we, like more interesting things like that can happen because you're willing to roll with stuff. So it means we're more likely to come up with weird ass ways of doing things instead of just defaulting to, yeah, let's kill everything. We'll, like just I prefer slaughter that. them all. I think it's Which is my normal Baldur's Gate playthrough, but it's really I seduce everything in Baldur's Gate. I kill Deep everything. My lesbian dragonborn <laughs> has cut a swath. She scissored her way across Faerun. <laughs> I make a very specific point of killing every single goblin that is hanging around anywhere near the camper village. I go and wow. find them all. All right, like, so is it personal. <laughs> it's kind of personal yeah. now at this point. 
Brie Ark, motherfucker. Um, all right, speaking of Brie Ark, uh, we finally make it to Craig Maw Castle, folks. And uh, the way the Craig Maw Castle is structured, there are a few entrances. Uh, there is a concealed door at the north. There is the main entrance to the west. And there is another door to the south. Uh, the players botched a stealth roll. Uh, well, Christine's NPC, uh, while you had uh, injured your back, or I believe, um, botched a stealth roll on the way in the front door and ended up in a giant melee. Um... However, the fun thing about this is that the, the roof is collapsible. There is um, a chance of alarms being sounded. Uh, but the the way that the, the whole thing was set up, the alarms did not completely get sounded. Uh, and the players fought their way through. There were a few times where I allowed the sound to be a bit dampened just to not have it be a non-stop fight with no breaks ever, ever, ever. Um and uh you guys fought your way through there was a collapsing ceiling which i thought was hilarious uh krista you tried to collapse the ceiling because i said the roof was weak uh but you collapsed it right next to where there is literally a trap to collapse the ceiling like i'm not even kidding like like if you look like right here it's on the map like it's it's just right there like it's beautiful um if you uh, there's a tripwire that drops the roof um right in front of the door to the temple it's Chekhov's weak ceiling, and I needed to pull it. You did. You pulled it. Um, besides that, you head through there. Uh, there are a couple of floaty brain monsters and, what, Gricks and Grells and other G-words that you can fight. Um, it, it felt a little weird to have both of those in a dungeon, I'm not going to lie, where it's like, what? how many different floating tentacle G-things can we have? Um, so I threw in a little, uh, music box mimic because I think they're hilarious. Music box mimic for that the win. That was great. That it was had, pretty like, amazing. I was had, just like, waiting. I was like, points. waiting. There's, there's going to be a mimic. There's got to be a mimic in here somewhere. There's going to be a mimic. Yep. It's a mimic. Um, and then you're fighting King Kroll and King Kroll or for me, King Grohl, Dave Grohl, uh, is a fierce old bugbear. Um, here's the problem with that. Um, the players have fought their way through this, and it is not hard to fight. It is not hard to fight a um, uh, a a, do a doppelganger, a direwolf, and a bugbear. In fact, the 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 doppelganger is the only dangerous thing at all because it gets a sneak attack bonus. Um, which I believe who who discovered that much to their detriment was it was it Anthea or was it. It was Anthea or Lyric? One of oh, it was Anthea. Anthea got completely leveled by uh, by the the doppelganger. But the rest of the fight is really weak, which is why I threw Glassstaff in there, going to get reinforcements to retake the red the red brands. Um, even then, it was a pretty quick fight. The only way that it really becomes good is if you have King Grohl uh, be alerted in advance and then hold Gundren hostage. Uh, he can TKO uh, totally just just coup de gras um Gundren in one hit um so it is probably a good idea to give your characters a potion um well probably like a scroll of revivify or something that can be used um I that's why I seeded it to him in the previous scene because I'm like there's a good chance I'm just gonna kill Gundren and that's gonna really really mess up the story uh they didn't have to use it on him they could have just let him die and then been like well time to avenge him I was wondering if that was actually like an included item or not. No, I added that uh, in because I'm like, oh, he gonna get he gonna get murked. Yeah, like that is a much worse encounter without that. Yeah, and also I did think you had glass staff cast cone of cold on us. I'm like, Jesus, I'm like, that's so fucked up. I was I so, like actually stressed. No, I gave him a, a scroll of rhymes blind, uh, rhymes binding ice, which is a much weaker spell, but it has a lot more utility. So it's pretty nice. Yeah, st still still better than taking like what is it like eight d eight or eight like ten d eight damage or whatever the hell it is like unpleasant amount of cold, cold yeah, damage. unpleasant amount of cold damage a frigid amount. Um, Arvetus in the chat is asking. I was wondering what I would have done if they hadn't used the revivify scroll. Uh, isn't he necessary to point the way to Wave Echo Cave? I would say that the torture finally paid off, and that he had given up the information again, and that they had written it down. So they would have had the info on King Grohl or something. He could have had a map on him. Um, I would have had it written down that he had been tortured for more information and they, they had a copy of something. So 
Um, that that would have been how I would have gotten it. Alternatively, they could have done Speak with Dead. And then I would have just had, like, like his brother maybe survive. I mean, one of his brothers survived, but, like, you know, maybe have the other one survive instead. Um, so beyond there, you guys went to Wave Echo Cave. Does anybody have anything they want to suggest about... Um, about the the big fight inside of Cragmaw Castle. It's a big fight. Mm -hmm. If you have a rogue, it probably is a much different fight. If you go if, solid snake, like if we don't like also absolutely shit the bed on the stealth check on the way in, that's twice we've done that in a really bad spot. And I'm really kind of pressed that it keeps happening because I'm pretty sure it wasn't my fault that time. No, that's what <laughs> I was wasn't mean. there. <laughs> no, and the Nothic cave was each of us doing it in order, uh, which was the funniest part is like everyone in the party rolled a one within like a minute of in game time. So that's true. Uh, we explored that whole complex, hey? Yeah, you did. Uh, the only thing you got most of the stuff in it, and if not, I had uh, Gundren go and pillage a bunch of it. Uh, the staff isn't in the, your special staff. That that's just nice. That's just it, it, there's a nice staff in in the, the game, but it doesn't do anything extra. I just wanted it to be kind of neat for you, so I just added. Appreciate it. Th that is like the one thing I'm not used to about playing monks. It's uh oh, I don't get to use all the sweet gear. Uh, sad face. I like having shiny items and pr like. You miss out on the treasure aspect of it, which is like, whatever. But yeah, you're aesthetic, man. You don't collect treasure. Uh, so let's go to Wave Echo Cave. So you guys make it to Wave Echo Cave. There's a bunch of wandering monsters. I find that wandering monsters in a streamed game are not nearly as much fun uh, because they kind of just slow down the plot unless unless you can make them part of the story or make them part of like a nighttime encounter or something. Like have them show up when it is dramatically appropriate, not when the dice tell you. Um, alternatively, if they give you something really cool, like once again, the wandering monsters before here are stridges, ghouls, gricks, bugbears, skeletons, zombies, and an ochre jelly. All right. Uh, so that's all inside of the cave. Um, the ochre jelly is the only one that I really like because that one's great. Uh, so wave echo cave is a very big cave. As you can see, it is very large folks. Um, and Normally, it takes you a very long time to reach up here unless you go straight to it like my players did. They sped run the dungeon. They went down a hole. They went up and up and up and up and around. What the hell? Um, Your players might do this. You always follow the left. <laughs> Is that from yeah. over the stick? Like no I think it might be. I I know it from my playing with like one e players, like people that started in the seventies. Is like if you get in a dungeon, you just follow left, and that's just always what I've done. I that I'm because like as a, like a gamer, I love going through and exploring the entire thing, like You're every piece of it. But I'm like, but also, what if we just like went and got our objective and got out, which is like the smartest well, that's way. that's the thing is that like if you just hug left you just you keep your hand on the left wall and you just follow yeah. that you theoretically would see everything but we just happened to get to the end of it before we needed to see the rest of it right and that's that was the problem because there was some other stuff that i really wanted to have show up so um you guys sped ran uh there are a couple like you you bypassed a couple of fights uh the giant constrictor snake i had to use because it was there um there are six bugbears behind that room that you you skipped around um, I did do a little flub. I had it barricaded on both sides of the door rather than just the opposite side. Uh, but I figured that they're going to barricade themselves in for defensive purposes. So I ran with it. Um, Thank you, bug bears. You can get a potion of healing if you fight through there. Six of them. Yay. Um, so then you go into the... Uh, so there are a number of things that you guys missed. Uh, so you went straight to the spider. Uh, the spider is the weakest antagonist I have ever seen in a D&D module. I'm probably forgetting some, but oh my god, the dude has 27 hit points. Uh, he has an AC of 14. Uh, he, the, like, at level 4, 
there is no way are you guys level four when you were fighting him or are you level f you're going to level five now right yeah uh so you're level four when you're fighting him like a monk can take him out in one round of combat very easily by rolling like middling damage right um and he only has two bugbears uh as his sidekicks there so there's really not much. Oh, pardon me. Um, and and two bugbears and a doppelganger from the previous area that you guys already took out. So that doppelganger will go and help him. So fighting him, I have read repeatedly, and I wish that I had I had seen this beforehand to make it better. Is a lot of people, um, including in the chat right now. Uh, I think it was was a Kelowna Curd that said so. Yeah. So Kelowna Curd was saying that he made him a drider, uh, so a half draw, half spider. I think my favorite version of this is you kill the spider and then his pact with his dark gods give him a phase two boss battle as a drider. And I wish I would have done that. I I feel Very like I really... JPRG. Right, I love that shit. Um, God, Robin's picking a fight in the chat saying Lord Soth is the wimpiest. That's just because you use things he couldn't save against. Um, so... That was uh, that was a lot of fun. I would have him come back as a second round of combat. Alternatively, you can have him be a completely pathetic idiot like I did, where he goes glitter and then gets mulched. I love it. Just absolutely drop kicked. Just absolutely drop kicked. Um, so other things that are in the dungeon that you missed, and then we'll go back to to this fight and what you can do. Also, uh, I think it was so funny in that last room because there there was a statue that depict the dwarven god of mining if you try to steal its eyes the pillars collapse and probably kill you the room just goes um so uh, across the cave there is a there's a wraith called mormask uh mormask um by the way if you have not listened to the youtube slash podcast cut of that you probably should because i put audio filters on every single line of my dialogue for that. It's pretty great. Um, you should go listen to it, guys. Like, seriously. Uh, so you go to the Forge of Spells. There's a spectator there. Um, so like a little baby beholder that has been trapped there for hundreds of years because he doesn't have a clock. Um, he's supposed to be like way more like standoffish and not leaving that location. But I, I needed to get you over there to, like, have you guys interact with him. So I had him, like, checking around for, like, hey, did I hear something? Hey, guys. Are you the owners? And basically turning him into Teddy from, I, from Bob. I loved the, the, the... <laughs> the transition of the voice from this like i'm this very serious spectator to hey guys i'm just stuck here can you tell me to go <laughs> it's very good yeah well he has his work he has his customer service voice and he's got his real voice yeah right? exactly <laughs> um now here's the thing so you can fight the wraith the wraith you guys you guys punk to that wraith so quick so quick like you just like put him in put him back in the ground in seconds um and i'm really glad that you went that way because if you go through the smelter cavern there are eight dwarven zombies and a flame skull for those who don't know flame skulls are the party killer of low level parties because they have fireball on command they're terrifying sorry did you say dwarva bees no i said dwarven zombies Dwarvabees. Dwarvabees. <laughs> Perfect. Do they have half the hit points? Uh, no, but they're very steady on their feet. Dangerous over short distances. Yes. <laughs> just little bees with big beards. Dwar they're just dwarves. They hammers beard, instead beard of stingers. Huh. God. I thought you were talking about zombies, like zombie dwarves with like bee beards. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> just hold covered on, in bees. Can covered you just in bees to me again. I'm like <laughs> bees. Where's where's all our fan artists? Can I'm, we get a can we get a, a beard of bees? You got a beer beard of bees. bees. The bees the bears. Dwarf. I'm all right. Big I'm make, fuck off beard. Big fuck off beard of bees. You put uh, the bee my... back in beard. How many izzard quotes can I get <laughs> into one sentence? Played by James Mason in the film. 
<laughs> I'll hack at your neck with a thin bit. Um, Darth Vader, Darth Vader, Jeff Vader, Jeff Vader. You're quite nice. I say you're quite nice way too often for my own benefit. For like, for, she, oh, you're quite nice. All right. Uh, so I don't know what else to say about this, folks. You go through. It's a big, a big damn dungeon. Um, and I, I would say for some fun, uh, when you get into the Spellforge, the Spellforge has this like um, this thing where it, it's something that I really dislike actually from from just like a storytelling standpoint there's a magic flame that people used to use to enchant items uh, now it is very weak and any non-magical weapon or suit of armor bathed in the green flame of it uh, for at least one minute becomes a plus one weapon or suit of plus one armor for 1d12 hours and i hate that I hate that because it's giving the players something that they think is going to be permanent because there's no way they wouldn't think it would be permanent. But they also have to do something very specific mm -hmm. to get something that's not permanent. Give them a magic plus one weapon. Give them a plus one piece of armor. <laughs> Just have it only work once. Have it be one piece of magic something, right? Gamers love that. Gamers love, but they don't love the temporary buff that later you take away. No, no. People want the unique item. They want the the unique scenario. And Lightbringer. Lightbringer, uh, which is just so great after playing Baldur's Gate. The temple didn't even explode this time. Oh, good for you. Nice. I didn't well, know you... you could explode it the first time. That was that was interesting to find out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um and the breastplate is just kind of cool. Um, it would have been helpful to, uh, to get the brace, the breastplate of Tarragon, Turgon, whatever, um, to get breath weapon advantage. Uh, you yeah, give, thank you very much, Snowy. Yes. Give your players the cookie. They want the cookie. <laughs> um, so yeah, does, uh, there is a bunch of stuff, uh, that you can get. There's also gauntlets of ogre power. I kind of, I forgot to mention those when I was running it because I was so flabbergasted by how quickly they killed the diggers inside of the excavation site. Like I just got amazed by that. And I forgot to mention that there were, uh, there was an excavation there. And I, I uh, so I had made sure to give them the opportunity to go back and get the gauntlets of ogre power later, because why not? Um, I greatly appreciate that. Well, you're going to need it because the rest of the module is very, uh, very rough in many ways. Um, I really look forward to running you through it. But what I what would you say about this this chapter? Like, what would you say about Way of Echo Cave that was good? What was it? What was bad? What was meh? I'm going to admit that my favorite parts were the in-between role-playing scenes and not the actual content. Yeah. I, I think because we, we, we did end up speed running it, so it felt really like good. There was enough encounter without being like, oh god, we're stuck in this place again. Fuck. Type feeling. So I think it's good we went the way we did um, because we had enough encounters that it felt like a f interesting dungeon but didn't feel like a drag. Which maybe going the other way initially would have mm. been especially if we hit the flame skulls early Man, that, that would flame be like skull. well fuck screw this type thing instead we went did the thing and then had that weird ass like encounter with the beholder spectator and then the fucking but he like, saw he saw right. handsome look at him jeff a handsome boy it was my name like, is jeff? jeff the archaeologist oh, anthropologist sorry there. anthropologist i like to study it's people there with just like yelling about no it's not the spell forge yes it's the spell forge what kind of spell forge is like that entire everything about it was just so good and so I much i kind fun. of wish i, was I just so it for misinterpreted character. what kelly said <laughs> It was perfect. See, I was really wishing I was playing a more quirky character, like say Win or something when we got there, because then I could have had a plus one bucket. Plus one bucket? Yeah! <laughs> plus one stick. Let's just put a stick in it and see what happens. As is, it made my like silver longsword like mwah. <laughs> mwah. 
It's great. Um, does anybody have anything specific about the actual, like any suggestions for anybody? Make the spectator fun. Um, yeah. Make the freaking race thing fun too. Cause that was hilarious. That was amazing. Dude, the I... in... Okay. His entire write up is that he is the rest of the spirit of the last wizard to die here. Mormesk the Wraith. Mormesk was a powerful mate till he met his end in the spell battle at the climax of the bandit attack that ruined the spell forge. Centuries of anger have poisoned his soul, transforming him into a hate filled apparition. No longer corporeal. He cannot touch or possess the wealth he enjoyed in life. He's Skeletor. Which yeah. is great. You could also yeah. kind of play him like Scrooge a little bit. Mm-hmm. Probably too. I'm smarter something he can't than the use. smarties. <laughs> I'm tougher than yeah, the Yeah, I think I think aside from like you said, aside oh, from no, I'm thinking Scrooge is <laughs> aside like, from Magic Ryan Christmas being a little Carol. weak. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I think aside from that, this this whole part was like, like I said, like the second we got here, I felt I was invested again. I was ready yeah. to go because it was like we were doing something. And I think even if we had gotten a little lost, at least we're like on the track and we're doing stuff. And even if, mm. if we hadn't sort of speed run it, I don't think I would have been as upset um, <laughs> with ending up taking a little longer there. Um, mm. Yeah, like you said, I think I think buffing Magic Brian. Yeah. It's about the it only thing to give him the Dark Souls second harder. encounter. Yeah. Could have been a little Sorry. harder, but not so hard of like a group of flame skulls. <laughs> yeah, yes. flame, sc- <laughs> flame skulls. Always a dick flame move. Skull, flame. Even, even at higher levels, they're a dick move. I love them. I love them. They wrecked but... us in Dragon Lance. Oh, yeah, because there were three of them in one room. And we went, oh, um, no. And then boom. Because we were in a room, enclosed room, and it just. Yeah. The right size to put a fireball in the middle and hit everybody, no matter it's what. It's so good. It's so good. Just, just three fireballs in a row. So good. Um, flame skulls are great if you hate your players. Uh, so of course I use them in Dragonlance. Um, I think that's like probably like I would have like as a player like in, enjoyed going through it, but I think also because we're broadcasting, I think that's like the right amount of t- if the timing felt good mm-hmm. to be like this is the the squad going through it. We did it in like two weeks. Yeah, you did it in two sessions. I planned for three. You guys did it in two. Perfect. Like, we could definitely do a third session, but I'm happy to do it in two. Mm. Like, And that's, that's I think, a big part as well about, like, whenever we do these how to runs and stuff like that, and I think we always say this, is, like, this, if, if your table doesn't run like this, it, it shouldn't, because <laughs> we're doing it for you. Like, we're doing it as a performance. It is part acting and part, like, we're 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 talking in the background occasionally being like hey guys we got to fucking get through this because otherwise it's going to take us another two fucking months to get through everything (laughs) how much fucking around are we willing to do well and there's also a certain level of shit talk and over talk that doesn't happen in our games because you can't do it without the audio screwing up whereas Mm. you could do that in a room together yes that's my favorite learning curve D &D. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. That's one of the best things about doing doing like in your if we were all in a room together, that'd be a little better too. Like just with like our own independent mics. Someday, someday, join the Patreon so I can get a studio. Um, side, I'll get a just do sidebars. Just do sidebar, sidebar. We'll sidebar. have a real bar. Ooh, yeah, real bar. Uh, our tavern, the Tavern of Tales. Um, so yeah, your experience that will too. vary, but. I think as well, um, in terms of like spending way too much time in a dungeon, I would rather spend time role playing at the tavern or having a camping scene with you guys than going from room to room to room to room to room, making sure that we clear every single room and we we get every single piece of loot and you know we make a bunch of arbitrary rolls. I would rather be be telling a story with you guys. Um, so, I'll... yeah. Just thinking like. In these sorts of campaigns, there's so far, at least in my experience, there hasn't been terribly many things that are that interesting to buy with all the loot you're getting. Yeah, they never give you a town. I don't care about all the money that could be collected. I don't don't care. There has only been, um, in the modules, I think Netherdeep had a couple things you could spend money on occasionally, but like Dragonlance had the only one, and it's because they went to a place where I put a poll in the, I put a poll among the players, and they decided the shopkeeper, a renegade mage running this shop, was played by Christopher Walken. Hmm. 
And okay, so he cool. was a shopkeeper named Lavender, who was played by Christopher Walken. And like he he just Oh, he was so good. But he's the only person that has ever sold them anything worthwhile. Yeah, I'd rather get a cool item than a whole bunch of gold. It just, yeah. it... I mean, it's only useful in games where, say, you have a cleric who needs to, like, do the thing of buying, like, the diamond stuff worth resurrection and things like that. Like, bringing back party members to life and just doing that at least once to kind of lay out, yes, I have those things because they were worth so much. You kind of have to have paid for it. Mm. But other than healing potions and, like, occasionally well, better you're armor? you're not even supposed to be able to buy healing potions according to Raw, right? Like, there's there's no price for them. Mm. Like, yeah. Well, it's... that's like, like Arvetus in the chat said, like, in 5e, there's nothing to do with money. Not like, unless you homebrew it. Yeah. That was... that. Yeah, I... I it was one of those things that I really missed about Pathfinder because I, I didn't play any fourth. I kind of played three. I played path. I went from three, five to Pathfinder to fifth. And mm. in Pathfinder, like my character that I played predominantly through my entire run of Pathfinder for like four years was a, basically an artificer. Um, and I crafted items and my DM was an economist who <laughs> built entire economies in his Ooh. world. And so it was all about like he had money exchanges for when you went to different cities and stuff and you'd have to like exchange your coin to make sure that you could buy things. <laughs> and uh, I, I broke down, I took all the feats for building and it all changed like how much things cost and the amount of time of crafting it would take. And I love, I like, that's not everybody's game like you were like you were saying amy like you would rather have role play sessions rather than like finding stuff there are plenty of tables that just want to grind and just want to go through hit all the rooms kill all the monsters get all the loot but 5e in a in as many wonderful things as 5e does that part of it it doesn't do great because it mm -hmm. simplified so much it took a chunk of that out that's fair. And Pathfinder did have that book like Ultimate Equipment in First Ed, which is so, so I, good. There was a chapter on building equipment and making your own armor. And there were feats upon feats about being able to make your armor faster or enchant armor. And all of it had equipment, had money costs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like, I would, I literally would be like, okay, so this costs this and this costs this. And, and okay, hey, how do you feel if like this, this and this would come together and I, I i made a cell phone it was one of the first times i had encountered cell stones in D D. cell uh, stones and i said okay yeah and i was like okay the message cantrip to have us to have a spell to have an item that does a spell of first level is this amount like that was the breakdown of it it was like if you had a magic item that did a spell once it was this amount if it was a reusable item it was this amount if it was unlimited at will it was this amount it like fully broken down into that and i made a deal that i was like hey if i use the message cantrip or the, the message spell on a rock there's a limited number of rocks that can do it at will but it's a limited number a family plan and so the more like they're exactly um but i made a deal that it would be cheaper by like by 25 percent if, if you only had, use it between like 6 p.m. and 6 a.m.? or No, it had the alarm spell cast on it. And so it had a ringtone you couldn't turn off. And it did not come into play. I built these at like fifth level. It didn't come into play until 20th level when we were in hell, sneaking past literal demons. <laughs> and someone's fucking cell stone went off. And we ended up in this massive fight because of it. That's beautiful. But you wouldn't have come up with right. <laughs> you wouldn't have you wouldn't have experienced that if we didn't have like how to price out spell enchantments. No, totally. And it's it's one of those things that five e just missed. And if that's not your game, great. But Pathfinder still exists. You can go play Pathfinder. You can go play you can three play five. Pathfinder second. You can go yeah. play first edition. Well, yeah, and exactly. there's. But also, you can also use third-party stuff to start bringing in additional things. Like, one of the things that we do in a lot of our homebrew games is, like, I've got the Tome of Mystic Tattoos. And so people want magic tattoos. They're, they're willing to pay a lot of money for those because they're badass. 
Who doesn't want to shoot tentacles out of a tattoo on your arm? Right? Like, That's something I'd pay money for. Tia's tattoos in Shards of Nern was very formative in how I looked at her as a character. Like, just... Now she's strong. Now she looks so cool. I love her. Damn straight. Damn straight. Um, so, yeah. So, folks, that is uh, that is Lost Mind of Fandelver, as far as I, I would say. Um, everything that I said about the first two chapters are applicable for the last two. Like, make it very character-based. Have a lot of fun with it. Um, watch out for the flame skull. Everything else is just easy. And give the spider a second form. Make him make him a make him a drider, because that is a much bigger fight in hell. Maybe even like give it a horror movie angle where like he can get a surprise attack if the players aren't paying attention. Because like, you know, the body's not dead technically. Like that would be badass. I really wish that I would have done that. That is my one regret from this part of the game. Um, but if we don't have anything else to say about that, we do have some questions that people at our Discord left us. Uh, just a couple for tonight. So they are, what was your favorite part of Lost Mind of Fandelver, and what part, in your opinion, could use the most improvement? Um, is there anything different that anybody would like to suggest for that? Favorite part of it was the player interaction for me. I've... Droop is the sleeping baby. Droop? Droop, okay. <laughs> Not Actually, curd. Sorry, the two goblins. Curd, curd will have a very special place in my heart, but the trauma incurred by curd uh was was unimaginable. And uh Droop just made it so much worse, but so much better. And I just love them with my whole heart. Right. All right. Anybody else got anything they want to throw in? Uh alt suggestion for the the fight with uh the spider. It could be animate animate the statue. Have like oh, some sort yeah, of like yeah. golem or animated statue, like or excavated thing, like excavated horror kind of deal. Yeah, you can uh, use the stats from a gorgon pretty easily. Yeah, one of the instead of don't use a golem stats, don't use golem stats. They're broken. <laughs> Please not, do not. Not, a, not a, or do or do. It's not. It's your game. Like they're a level four Fuck party players. So that's what's there's up. Like, there's those grinders in Strixhaven. What the in Strixhaven? The ruin grinders. G r i n d r grinders. Yeah, yeah, yeah the ruin exactly. grinder. The the ruin grinder. What's a ruined uh, grinder? It's like a ruined cougar. <laughs> Amy's dead. Amy's dead. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, those those. Uh, if you're looking for like mining equipment, and there's also a whole bunch of stuff like that in Avernus, right? There's like a bunch of infernal machines and stuff like that. Yeah. that I'm sure you could throw in there. You absolutely could. Or even just animate object, honestly. I so, really enjoyed whatever chaotic, weird things you were seeding for my character, because I have no idea. Well, I have some idea, but I also have no have idea, idea what the hell is going on there. Thank you for singing songs for me and stuff. That was fun. Yeah. How dare you drop that on me with no warning? Yeah. It's, it's almost like you're a singer. You're fine. Uh... You're fine. You're fine. You played a bard. If you're if you're playing you a bard awesome. on a stream and you're not willing to do at least a little bit of like rapping, then what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? As unless you're playing like a stand-up comedian bard. Well, then you better you better have a tight five. Exactly. I uh, although that you know I'm not gonna say it. The joke's too easy. Uh, speaking of too easy, uh, what part of the characters have you enjoyed the most? What is the biggest surprise you have encountered with them and their development? I like the romance between between. I was going to the... say that was probably the biggest surprise because that just happened in game one. I would I kind of want. <laughs> hey, <laughs> want to do a Romeo and Juliet thing? <laughs> Chris was like, "Yeah, sure." And After that it, first it, fight, and it was like, "Oh, there, there's something kind of happening there." Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Wasn't expecting. And it I did not plan it. Did not go into it in, with pl plan. And that was definitely, like, that was even something that Kelly was very, like, pointedly, like, you guys are playing very similar backstories. You're play like, you could start stepping on toes with certain things. Are you guys okay with this? And, like, double-checked that we were both good. And, and yeah, we, we're like, and oh, we yeah. did very clearly discuss it that you were yes. going a certain style of noble and I was going very much a certain style that was kind of, like, the whole beaten down and rebellious of it. So... 
Yes. It worked out. And we both came out. Different. Exactly. And we both have that, like, we're rebelling from our parents, but we're doing them in, like, very different such ways. Such different ways. Mm. I mean, uh, in the end, cool. we're doing it the same way. Yeah. But for different reasons. <laughs> exactly. I also like the, the Sindri Sildor romance. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. The really slow burn romance. And then Sildur's being like, yeah, I know. It's <laughs> it's very funny to me because Sindri's being like shy about it, which is not. I I was wondering, I was thinking about Sindri as a character, and I was wondering if I was actually doing a good job creating a separate character from me personally. I'm like, I, this has a lot of me in it. I get every character does. But like, I'm like, mm. is this is this someone different? And I'm like, oh, actually, yeah. Um if I want something, I'll just let you know, actually. I'm not going to be like, Tee! and run up to my my room. It's like, no, no, like, playing a little bit more shy, a little bit more reserved. Um, being a WWE-style monk for a lot of my fights against skeletons and stuff is really fun, but, like, I don't know if I'm actually... That's the one part where I'm pr pretty confident in, like, actually creating a character as opposed to, like, playing <laughs> playing myself as a monk. Because you're down to wrestle in real life too, though. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, just uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, please. I was just going to say to clarify my earlier comment because I can see a couple of our team members are arguing in the chat right now that uh, <laughs> that a bard should not have to sing in character. I'm talking about on a stream. It was a joke. Uh, if you're streaming a game, <laughs> you should be ready to do a little bit of performing hey, if you're playing hey, a Kelly, bard. Because the, yeah, if you're if you're playing a rogue, you have to know how to pick locks IRL on a stream. I, <laughs> I do know how to pick locks IRL and I do know no. how to deadlift. So like I can play every class except for Druid. Be well, that's not true. I know how to play. I know how to pretend to be an animal. Go bench be a there. horse whisperer right now. And I can whisper to a dog. horse. I, I can bench press the dog. No, actually he hates to be picked up. So he would be really, really, really squiggly. Wiggly. He'd be real wiggly. He hates it. Uh, but Crystal, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say uh, Squish really sort of threw me yeah. for because uh, like Caitlin's character is just so, so wonderful. We we talked a lot about our character builds at the beginning, um, maybe even more than I did with Christine, because our characters were going to kind of be tied um, because she was working on a way to cure the vampire. That was kind of our whole backstory of why we were traveling together. Um, and so we have... Um, uh, because things kind of picked up with uh, with Alessandra and and then also speaking to like her interest in wanting to spend time with Lyric of being like, hey, you're also a kind of being that people are sort of hate sometimes just for the sake of being that kind of being. Um, and so I haven't I haven't gotten as much of a chance to really like play that side of it with Caitlin. Um but the way that Caitlin's, the way that Anthea has developed and Squish showing up and just being this like, <laughs> just fighty little blob. I love it so much. Um, and yeah, I really, I, I loved, I hope we can give Caitlin a few minutes uh, at next game to talk about how they like, how, how they feel about Anthea's sort of creation. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much, I'm, yeah. Anthea has casual bits of Caitlin here and there. Most of the yes. sociopathy. Like, oh, it's yeah, very, most of those moments of just the just die already type stuff. Just like, it's just like oh, there's Caitlin. There's Caitlin. Uh -huh. She looks sweet, but she's a, she's a monster. Or like she's a... Be, being just like, oh, well, you can call me Ella. That's okay. <laughs> she's she's so maladapted. <laughs> this is a, it's a good party. It's a good party. It's so good. Um, the, does anybody else have any big surprises or favorite moments they want to shout out? Because I don't think so. Uh, right. I I don't know. This is actually kind of the opposite of a surprise. Um, I famously don't write backstories for my characters. <laughs> I I come into things just like this is the basic idea and whatever sounds come out of my mouth that is who this character is and they are built within the first game um i'm not the kind of person that writes 10 pages of backstory and mm -hmm. is like this is who the person is comes the fully fledged idea i'm just not good at that um i need to play off of other people to find out who that person is um so when I kind of came in with Carmilla with a bit of a better idea of like who she was and what her journey was going to be and 
this is i i feel like this is the first time both like well definitely the first time on stream maybe like the second time in any game i've ever played where i've really gotten to like explore who carmilla is and like explore a character and really get to know her and like and she's going down the exact path that i kind of wanted for her and i haven't ever really gotten a chance to do that not from anyone's any dm's fault but purely from my own of i've just never that's never been what I wanted out of D and I always just wanted to be silly with my friends and like tell a fun story. Um, and I've never wanted to be like, I, I am very prone to main character syndrome and I know that about myself. So I actively like take myself out of a character so that I don't fall into that trap. And so I'm kind of letting myself like feel out a character and, and, and explore her as a being. And I have definitely asked for specific scenes of like, no, I, I need to run this scene with people. I want this to happen. Um, and, and thank you all for letting me do that. Cause it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> do, do you find that the form that I put up before game with like the point form questions was helpful for that? Because it's not a huge amount of backstory, but it's some ideas absolutely that helps me a lot because i never know where to start like i'm always like well what do i really need to know about this character does it really matter um so i do like like the that you put out because it does give me enough of an idea to be like okay there's some more pieces in place here so i know what yeah. to jump off of well and yeah. i find it very useful for me as a as a dungeon master and storyteller if you are like oh i have these three friends i'm like okay cool and one of them is like you're like oh he's like my little brother okay what and we discover what type of little brother that is through play like i have him show up and he's like hey can i borrow a dollar and you're like oh you're always asking me for money ever since this you improv that and i'm like okay well it's only because you know and then you can kind of roll with it right and it, it just Absolutely. creates this mm -hmm. it creates this backstory we had um a really great version of that so like um I, in fandelver i've been using a lot of flashbacks um, because I find them very useful, but flashbacks can be, if you do them right, one of the most useful ways to, to round out a character, especially if you do have bullet points, like you're like, okay, these characters met at some point, or you have a backstory with this person. It, it means a lot more to see something in play. It's a show don't tell thing. Um, if you go back and watch our Reign of Emery's campaign, which you all should, uh, there is a moment there where Christine's character has a backstory meetup with, uh, with somebody. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but the entire nature of their encounter was re-roleplayed in retrospect. And it was this, like, it turned into this, like, very secret, pivotal thing that she kind of kept close to her chest. And it made sense that she wouldn't talk about it. Because it was a one, it was a one night encounter, and it was just like, yeah, this was a pivotal event. Oh, look, this is that person again. Oh, and then she actually had like real emotions as a player to draw on, and it's so so useful to have that. So yeah. don't be afraid of playing with the timeline. I mean, I do find it difficult to have a black backstory planned out going into a game because quite often I find when I do it parts of it just don't work once I actually start playing the character and I s can end up feeling very trapped by what I've already made or what I've already said because I didn't improv it. It just, I tried to pre-plan it. So I think I find the form sometimes a little difficult because I'm like, what do I say? What do I, Oh God, I have to figure this out without like any improv happening. Mm -hmm. And that's, I find where it's difficult, but like, I think for this one, Alessandra is probably the most backstory rich character I have because we've done so much with it in game. It's come up well, and, so much. And if you have a problem with it, talk to your DM, like work, yeah. work through it with ideas. Cause then you get that improv level where it's like, Oh, what about this? Well, I don't but know. we started out this? with the whole, like you wanting me to play something a little less buff <laughs> than usual or something just different. I was Lady like, is a tank. Oh, I kind of crippled paladin. Okay. We could do that. Mm -hmm. I think it's gone pretty well. And then we worked out backstory from there of like how that kind of affected like stuff. And I feel like she probably got one of the best backstories besides maybe Claudette. Hmm, yeah, and Claudette's right. an epic level character, which is why I'm very excited for um, for a game that's coming up in November that uh, I might tell you about in a few minutes. Who knows? 
Um, all right. So besides that, let's see. Um, for players who have never played their particular subclass before, how, how has the experience been? Do you like it so far or not? I've had a wild ride with College of Creation. Um, it's It's definitely an experience. I'm having fun with it, but I definitely have to think outside the box because it... What can I do? What can I make? Um, and I'm very excited for when I get my song of creation and or whichever animating whatever and can bring furniture to life because that's going to be incredible. So good. It's so good. I love it. Um, I kind of to change my subclass uh because i when i when i signed on to do the game i was like i am going to play it's like classic tier D D. i'm playing a champion fighter we're going total old school no magic just fighting and by second level i was so fucking bored <laughs> that i was like i can't i can't do this for another 10 levels um and so I ended up with Master or uh, Battle Master instead, How which are has you enjoying been very that? fun. I'm really liking it. Um, I, it definitely takes the right group of people. Like um, if you're jumping into a random group, like playing at a convention or you're you've joined a group that you don't really know the people. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it because I think some of the most powerful aspects of it do kind of require you to take a little little bit of control of your other characters um but like i know i have asked all the time like hey guys does anyone feel like it would be adv advantageous for you to move will this help you i'm gonna get a few other um uh, abilities later on in the next couple levels that will give me more of those abilities and they definitely are something that uh could be it could feel like you were trying to control a character if you're not careful about it Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i i think that 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 is I, i've been having a lot of fun with it 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 was definitely like um when i played uh isaac i really wanted to lean into the fact that he gave the help action all the time like he never mm. took two attacks he never used his bonus action all he did was use his bonus action to help and just give someone the help mm. action uh because that was like the whole character i wanted to play was someone learning to help people Go watch um, Wild Beyond the Witch and Life. yeah <laughs> he's a lot of fun um but oh where is he he's right here here he is my little guy oh. i love him um but yeah and so this is like playing this character who again is like a character that wants to be a harper like she wants to be a hero she comes from a family of villains and she doesn't want to be that and that's not who she is and she wants to be um she, and she's learning how to work with people um and i love being able to tie like abilities and feats and the the crunch tying the crunch into the character development is very very cool to me and going from being this like standalone fighter who just rolled nothing but fucking ones over so and good. over and over again <laughs> to now she's being part of her team and she's being aware of it and these abilities are reflecting that has just been like mwah, absolutely spectacular and i love her i love it a lot i i am just really gonna quickly point out also charlie's uh, chicken charlie a uh, friend of the channel uh his comment about writing backstories on sticky notes and just like ripping things off that don't work and then adding new sticky notes in that's Genius. I love it. Amazing. It and you can, so, anyway, you can also catch yes. Charlie in our Old Gods of Appalachia game. Um, and if you're on the Patreon, you've seen the most recent episode. Actually, I'm not sure if I make that public yet. Uh, it is It was is wild. Go watch it. It's wonderful. It's a great show. Um, I know that uh, and Thea, uh, Caitlin has loved playing an alchemist. It has been basically the foundation of that character. Um, and she's just, she's loving it. So alchemist, good. Um, what about, what about the last two? What do you think of uh, dragons and watchers? Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, Oath of the Watchers. Eh, I haven't really used it. Period. That's fair. I don't actually really. I've only got Channel Divinities from it. I don't get anything to level seven. So it's kind of also kind of whatever. You don't really get much from them. Um, besides spells, which you have no spell slots as a paladin, basically. So I don't use spells because. <laughs> Why would you when you could just smite something instead? Um, 
So for the most part, it's a fighter. And the more interesting part is actually playing an ASMR and getting like the little ASMR ability in wings. Like I do use lay on hands as a paladin. So fun. But for the most part, most of the paladin stuff I don't really use either, besides lay on hands. It hasn't really been a thing. Um potentially though, the channels for Oath of Watchers will be useful in the future if this goes more extra planar like it's supposed to. <laughs> Um, because I'll be able to do something about. with like, oh, for a minute, I can like pick 30 up to like so many characters within 30 feet of me and give them bonuses on like in charisma and wisdom saves <laughs> and stuff like it's, that. It, so there's gonna be some stuff I can that's... see ways that that will end up valuable but it's currently not really a, a thing i'm excited to have an extra attack again though <laughs> mm -hmm. it's gonna be really handy um chris what do you think of yours i like the character of it i'm finding that monk as it is already has like a high degree of um things to be aware of and manage like having your key pool is fine but like you are using your action, your reaction, your bonus action very often. And it feels kind of like hmm, not quite like playing a wizard in that you have to be managing things and know a whole bunch of different rules at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it. Uh, the breath weapon seems like is fun, but it's kind of weak. Like um, as it should be, like I don't want to be like super strong, but like 2d4 damage for a, like a couple levels does not feel especially gr great. AoE, having AoE at all is very nice, though. And mm -hmm. uh, the one that's come up a couple times that I've really appreciated is the one where you can reroll a failed social check uh, once per long rest. And I'm like, that is surprisingly handy. Uh, has come up, I think, twice now. It's just, like, a really neat skill. Um, and, like, I've been playing... I played a lot of D&D, &D and I'm still, like... I've still messed up a bunch of stuff that I'm like, wait a minute, I should know that. Mm. Or like forgetting that uh, taking flurry of blows is, or, or using martial arts as a bonus action. I'm like, I must have known that. Like, I just like no, just balancing like one of eight other things in the meantime. But it's fun. I like it. I would definitely play monk again. Pro and it, of the monk classes, probably this one. That's fair. And the thing is, uh, breath of the dragon does scale up, so it goes up with your martial arts die. But um, there's there's stuff at higher levels of this one that are actually like really cool. Yeah, definitely. Like some of the stuff is really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Like and also like being able to do uh, elemental damage with my hands, very nice, it has come in handy. Uh, running into that jelly, I'm like, fuck! What kind of jelly is it? What kind of damage is it immune to? Uh, cycle through all the different damage types until you find ones that work. Uh, gonna, it's pretty I'm handy very excited to get, to get like that. magic weapons for hands at level six. Magic weapons, throw hands. Um, all right. So uh, besides that, the last question that we had was from Tandy, and it was the secret passage of the Red Brand Hideout seems like the most expected way to go since the players are almost given the info right away without looking for it. Do you think there's a cool way to maybe have them work a bit more to find it so that it feels more rewarding or? maybe something that would incite them to actually check the manor and have them find the regular way into the cellar. Uh, I'd say a stakeout could be a lot of fun. So could uh, tailing red brands from that inn. Um, you could have one of the kids get captured. That one of the kids is like, hey, I was supposed to see my friend and like, like <clears throat> they're red brands and he can't leave and he, oh God, no, help me. And, uh, you know, you could be drawn, drawn into that. I think that there are a lot of ways that you could up the drama by including the town more. You could, they could have a food delivery and you guys, they're, they're, because they keep throwing parties up there, right? You're delivering some kegs of ale from the inn or something. With your, to your get Uber a, Eats? To get a look in the, yeah, 100%. Oh, it's it's yeah. Goober Eats. <laughs> you know, yeah, a talk Uber to wild ales. animals. You yeah. know? rats rats are your best friend rats are historical um all right uh so that that's what i would suggest i would i would bring that in um but any last words that people want to say as we wrap this up so uh as always uh what you do at your table is is great you're doing a good job take a breath 
talk to your players if you're stuck and feel free to reach out. You can always reach out to us on Discord. Uh, join our Discord, the link's below. Um, and if you ever have any questions, just, just take a breath. You, you got this. Um, the module is there to give you a framework. It is not a religious text. Feel free to go off script. In fact, the most fun that you are going to have with this thing is if you go off-roading. Much like most vehicles. <laughs> Strixhaven. <laughs> Strixhaven. <laughs> I just want to comment that I am still so shocked how useful sleep has been as a spell. Yeah. Nobody takes it. There's no save. You just fucking die. Good luck. It's beautiful. And I appreciate you not being able to hit me with it. That's also very nice. That's very nice. That's very nice. Just a party of elves just call casting sleep. We call ourselves the Sandmen. The best bandits. Just all ever. warlocks doing like double, like double casting and oh god, yeah, up oh casting god. sleep to everybody. So good. <laughs> we we are the snooze crews. Um, all right, and on that note, hey folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk. Um, once Caitlin is recovered next week, we will be back and we will be descending into the paths of peril. Uh, I'm really excited because this is where the module actually gets like real weird and real creepy and you've all signed a waiver. So um, is there a party name yet? Actually, the chat's asking. Yeah. The, the guidance counselors. So. <laughs> I like guiding lights better. But, guiding uh, lights. Guiding lights pretty good. Yeah. Guiding lights. Guiding lightweights. Second chancers is also, an, I think that Second. should be an option. Second chancers, the blinding <laughs> lights. Then you get your own theme song by the weekend. Ooh. Exactly. Well, we have the budget well. for that. No, we don't no. have a budget for anything. Join the Patreon. <laughs> hey, folks, reminder, if you'd like to support the stream directly, be sure to join the Patreon at patreon.com slash dorktales, where you can join the likes of my mom. She's there. She's the divine producer. She is divine. Uh, I love her very much. Thanks, mom. Uh, you can also join the likes of our demonic producers like Brickarius. Uh, who finally managed to troll the entire Shards of Nerdcast, and Kelowna Curd, who has yet to reveal his demonic form, but may in the future. Uh, our wizards of the Patreon, of course, are Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, and Sorcerer Sanguine. And our High Council of the Patreon is Terran, Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Chef Eladeth, Laruk, Mike Baxter, and Iridian. They're all amazing. You can join them right now. You can also check out our sponsor for the episode, Bookworm Games, and use code DORKTALES to save 15%. Reminder as well that when you buy something in Bookworm Games, any channel points you use on Twitch are doubled for the next uh, next session that you buy channel points in. Just let me know that you uh, you bought, and uh, I'll double them. So that could be, you could buy five Hurt the Moors, that would be ten Hurt the Moors. Do it. Which I see a Caitlin does exist in the chat, so I hope you feel better. She lives. She's alive enough to type. Uh, well, Caitlin, I hope you're feeling Unless better. Unless it's Chris on her computer, which that often too. happens. Yeah. That's fair. They're interchangeable. They wear the same clothes. It's weird. They finish each other's sandwiches. Um, <laughs> Caitlin, we love you. We hope you're feeling better. And hey, Is that they both you. got sick? Yeah, they, fin they ate the same. It was, it was, it was like a, it was a hot shrimp sandwich. Yeah, nobody wants that. Uh, folks, we love you very much. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fandelver and Below. We'll see you next week. Be sure to come back tomorrow night for the Shards of Nern. Uh, on Wednesday, you're going to come back and enjoy Transylvania Chronicles as it returns. And of course, Thursday is our special sponsored stream of Our Brilliant Ruin, which is just a fantastic game so far. You're really going to love it. You're going to love the way it looks. Uh, but with that, we will see you next time here on Fandelver and Below. Good night from Dork Tales. Bye, everybody.